Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is, I believe, the last day of October, uh, All Hallows Eve. Uh, well, I mean, I'm recording this on October 30th, so there's nothing about Halloween, but maybe tomorrow I'll do something uh, about the Halloween as an intro, because uh, I live very close to the um, the New York Halloween Parade. Uh, it, it's it's uh, it, there's a lot of things happening, so we'll see how it goes. Maybe, uh, maybe anyway, because I'm still very tired. My body just beat up. Uh, I don't know. It is what it is. Like, like sometimes I, I feel hot. Sometimes I feel cold. I can't feel right. Um, but uh, I'm sure it'll, it'll get better. It's just that you know, uh, as my friend, uh, <laughs> my friend who whom uh, ran marathon before, he describes it as being like the, uh, from Harry Potter. You know, the Dementor sucking the life out of you, and that's kind of how it feels. Like, just feels a little bit off still. Um, I think to well. One of the sad things is that the Yankees actually did lose today, so a game that was very heartbreaking uh, for me anyway. <sighs> you know, and I'm I'm not getting any younger. I might never live to see another Yankee World Series. But in any case, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll probably try to do the contest either tomorrow or the day afterwards, the, the both of them, because, well... <laughs> uh, I don't have any Yankee games anymore because that's the reason why I've been kind of uh, doing these a little bit later because I've been staying up to watch the Yankee game. Anyway, all right, let's take a look at today's problem. We have 2463 minimum total distance traveled. It's a hard problem, so we'll see. Um, you know, uh, I do have a little bit more energy at least right now. Um, you know, we'll see how I feel. I mean, as you know, these things, uh, I'm very, you know. Uh, th that's the thing with fatigue, right? Is that like right now I have energy for a little bit. We'll see how long I can go, but um, we'll, hopefully we'll you know go over this problem together as much as I'm able to, and we'll keep going. And uh, you know I have a sixteen seventy four day streak going, so you know uh, uh, maybe my explanation isn't so great, but uh, my solving is still okay, I guess. I hope so. Let's. Uh, long intro aside, let's get started. There are some robots and factories on the x-axis. Okay, so you're given an integer array robot with subside. You're given a 2D integer array factory where factory sub j is the position sub j limited. And the j can repair at most limited sub j robots. Okay. So we have to fix all of them or repair all of them. The position of each robot is unique. The factories are also unique, uh, and that the robot can be in the same position as the factory initially. Um, the first thing I wanted to see, honestly, was whether it is going to be... Because um, this sounds like a matching problem, and a matching problem often... Um, not often, but at least on lead code difficulty, and some of this is a little bit cheating. It's not cheating, but it's cheating in the sense that I know it cannot be super difficult, right? Like versus on code force or something. Sometimes I'm wrong on this one, so don't hold me to it. But um, but as a result, then like you know, I'm like okay, maybe if n is equal to sixteen or n and m or whatever is you go sixteen, then we we could do some like you know uh, algorithm. Uh, of course, this is a matching algorithm, so um, idea. Um, and probably you can play around with Hungarian algorithm, which I I don't like to do honestly. Um, and there's probably a max flow solution, which. I do actually do uh, enough times, but it's still going to be a little bit uh, wonky uh, with 200 nodes. Actually, I guess that's probably good enough for max flow. But I suspect that there, there's going to be a dynamic program solution, so let me think about it. Um, this is, of course, I, I just finished reading uh, this part, so I could be very wrong, but I just want to give you my, my thoughts as I'm thinking about this, right? Uh, as I'm reading it, not even thinking about it yet. Okay, so all the robots are broken. They keep moving in one direction. Uh, the direction could be negative or positive. Okay, so they either go left or right, um, and they have to, and have to. Um, okay, when a robot reaches, so hmm. I see. I see. So at any moment. You can set the initial that. What does that? What does that do at any moment mean? Why? Why wouldn't you just like do it at the first possible moment? <sighs> they cross each other. Um, okay. 
It costs us if it doesn't exist. Da, 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 okay. But they don't turn around, right? At any moment, part is kind of very confusing. I think you, they, they, they could probably just take it out and it'll be like, you can set the initial direction. That's good enough, right? Okay. So, what part is that? Some robot? I'm so confused. <clears throat> the phrasing on this one is kind of terrible. Uh, I think I understand it. You're supposed to set it for all robots, but you don't have to. Of course, for example, in this case, um, the robot that's on six doesn't have to move, but it's still like very confusing uh, the way that they put it. Um, and they don't give you the initial direction. So, <coughs> excuse me. Mm. Yeah, so basically, they, they they just have some robots. You can set the initial direction, and then the factories have some limit and stuff like that. Um, this is very confusing, honestly. Uh, like poorly phrased, rather. But uh, but we, we can solve it. We, it's fine. Um, the first thing to notice is that n is a hundred. Um, and as a result, I suspect there'll be. Um, dynamic programming. Um, the key thing to note, there is a couple of properties that we can kind of um, keep track of, right? One is that we it never makes sense to cross two robots, despite how they phrase it. I, if my understanding of the problem is right, right? Because, uh, and let me bring up the drawing board real quick. Um, cause the idea here is that, okay, you know, if you have two rope, uh, alright, let's draw the number line a little bit better. <laughs> let's say we have the, the number line or position line, X line, right? So you have a robot here and a robot here. Um, and the only reason why they would cross is because, the, you know, maybe the one on the left goes to a factory. That, that's a factory, I guess. Factory, but like that would never make sense, right? Because of the exchange argument. Because if you can set the um, direction for all of them, you would always make it so that they don't cross. So in that sense, it allows you to kind of do matching in that way. Um, because now that all the robots don't cross, then um, you can do them from left to right, right? Because from doing it from left to right, you only have to set for this robot going left or right, and it will never cross because you know that if this robot goes, if this robot goes right, then the next one, I mean, maybe it could go left, but it can, it would only go left if there's a factory in between or something like that, right? So I think that's really um, the idea that I would have for this problem, uh, if my understanding is right, because this is very, um, I don't know, I, I think I have some trouble understanding the exact. Um, definitions, but that's what I would think about. Um, okay, so let's say R is equal to length of robot, and I um, and I'm not really solving this yet per se. I'm just kind of trying to feel it out, right? And and the thing with dynamic programming is that often it is just um, some people like to say it is brute force and just trying everything, which is true to some degree and for some problems. But another way to think about it with what is trying every um, trying every possibility mean, right? Trying another possi every possibility for me also sometimes means case analysis because if you have cases that sums up to every possibility, then that well then ca that can lead you to the solution. Um, today this is a hard problem. Uh, it, and this is a dynamic programming problem, right? I'm going to focus on the um, the recurrence function or the function itself and not the dynamic programming part of it. I have enough videos where I talk about the dynamic programming things. And honestly, uh, today, like I said, I'm a little bit tired, so I'm just going to take the shortcut here. But trust that, you know, I mean... Honestly, if you if the dynamic programming part of it, the the saving it down, the caching, the memorization part of it, um, you still struggle with it, you probably should come back later. It, I mean, it's fine. You don't have to solve every problem the first time you look at it. But um, but this is a you know, uh, or you can just you know, 
paste the solution to, to get your daily credit, I think. But whatever. You know. Anyway. But yeah, so then here we have Get Mint. And the thing that I want to think about, right? Um, I don't know quite how I want to phrase it quite yet. So, but a very naive thing that I can do is that we have R index and we have F index, right? So for, one for robot, one for uh, the factory, right? Uh, I think that will at least give us some things, right? And then now, um, yeah, for F index, for so now you can think about it a couple of ways, right? You can, um, like, you you get to choose a little bit, <coughs> um, and I think they should be both the same, honestly. Um, it's just that if you do it in one way, you have to add another dimension and another parameter, which maybe takes another extra space, but you trade the space for maybe a little bit of time. I don't know. But in any case, um, what I mean by th I, that is that you can say for each robot, we try to put it into a, a factory. So you do a tick, no tick thing, right? Or for each factory, you do a tick, no tick on each on the number of robots, and you can maybe do it in a for loop or something like that. For me, I think for for, I mean, I, to be honest, I don't really feel that strongly about it. But um, but I'm gonna do the factory one just because you know uh, the limit is a little bit easier. Um, but yeah. So then now, the, uh, uh, I don't know if it's easier, but I think all the ways are, are the same. Honestly, just to be clear. Um, so the way that I'm going to do it is not necessarily like the best way, and especially I don't know now because I'm, I'm not done yet, right? So I don't know. But uh, but, but we can play around with it. And the idea here is that okay, so we have uh, let's just say if f index is equal to f, then we've done with all the fact. Do we what, what, where do we pair all robots, right? So actually, if um, if r index is equal to r, then we can return zero because there's no more distances to be had. If it's equal to f, then we actually return um, infinity, right? Because that means that we do have robots left, but we ran our factories, so we are not Gucci with the opposite of good, right? Um, otherwise, then now we have so factory of f index, um, right? Uh, yeah, so we have two things. One is the position and the other is the limit. I just want to double check which one is which. Okay, I mean, I, I think negative doesn't really make sense. But So x and say limit is equal to this factory, right? So then now we want to take just, uh, we want to do a take no take kind of thing, right? As I always play around with, except for we, we want to place it in a for loop for now. Um, and then the, the no, this factory matching no one is going to be just, you go to uh, so best is you go to infinity right, uh, and or you can say this is the no take or take no robots um, is you go to just get min of r index because we didn't take any robots and then f index plus one because we skipped this factory basically right and then now we just take i robots right ah, just like the movie I suppose is it i robot I think so right <laughs> i robot not okay anyway uh, so then we take either one robot. Or, um, well, I don't know why I put a comment on it. All the way up to limit uh, plus one, right? And uh, and the thing is that there are a couple of things you can do here, right? So here you can say, um, I'll, I'll do it the silly way first just to kind of show you how I think about it, but also how to kind of think, plan a little bit ahead. I mean, you don't have to, but sometimes I do and it, it helps, right? But then here, then now t take I robots, then now best is equal to min of you know, what, what we took previously or uh, R index plus I, F index plus one, right? Plus cost, right? But what is cost? Cost is equal to zero. And then we just sum it up for, uh, for, for J in range from R index all the way to R index plus I, right? We do cost equal to um, the factory sub or, or the x. We already have x here. The, the, um, minus robot sub r index or, or oh, sorry, or robot sub j and then the absolute value, right? So the delta. 
and this will be good enough uh, or at least this is a good enough idea right so what is the complexity here and let's just say we do a memorization right and then we just kick it off um, let's actually also double check that I am at least mostly right uh, ooh pets pets oh uh, list index oh, oh yeah 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 of course uh, we have to make sure that this doesn't go out of bounds or this doesn't go out of bounds really so it is going to be uh, yeah so if r index plus i is greater than or equal to r then we just break I, I know that this isn't quite precise I think you could put this in the, the order but I like to do it this way because I, I, I don't know the math is hard sometimes and you get it very wrong and apparently I get uh, uh, forever do 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 Hmm. Oh, because this is the uh, you go to R, so I think it has to be yeah. This, but does that give me an out bounds? Nope. Okay, but it does give me a wrong answer. Hmm. I expected I put six. Did I just do the math wrong? Uh, hmm. I think the idea should be right, but maybe I'm implementing things a little bit funky. Um, hmm. J is right on this one. R index. X. Um, so this would be... Hmm. Why do I get it this way? Take no robots, okay. Take I robots. This should be right. Um, and uh, am I right? So if this is one, then no, this should be right. I think I'm not off by one here, but okay. Um, hmm. All right. Well, let's take a let's take a look. Maybe maybe I have some in typo or something. I mean, probably. Uh, why did that? I really misunderstood the problem or something. So yeah. So do 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 f index. That should not be right because we should take be able to take two robots. Um, maybe this is. Like, we should be able to take two robots and uh, zero one, so the factory is at one. We should be able to take both robots to the second place, and this should be not infinity. So there is something funky here. Hmm. <clears throat> so zero one. Uh, factory. So I have, oh, I can only take one robot. Okay, so that is actually the infinity is right. So then one one is three. Um, sorry, I, I confused something. So one one is three is wrong, but then it should be two minus one. So that's why this is wrong. But what is? Hmm, I guess x doesn't change. But did I? Um, x is two. Um, did I sub robot sub J is right, right? Oh, oh, I'm dumb, I'm dumb, I'm dumb. I, I, I only know this is now. I, uh, okay. I actually thought about, I, yeah, okay, I'm just being dumb. Um, I, okay, I, I really did misread it. Um, so one thing is that, um, as we're doing a number line, for some reason, I think I was just looking at, at the, the picture and not the actual input. I noticed that now that the inputs are actually um, not in increasing order. So that's kind of an easy fix. I just, I don't know. Right, so then now we sort the uh, robots and we sort the factory, uh, and that should be good. Because the robots and the factories are in unique places anyway, right? So yeah, um, I mean, we kind of did the analysis going from left to right. So yeah, I think I just... Forgot to do sorting because I, I am tired. That's my excuse for everything today. So, uh, or this week, maybe even longer. Um, this is going to be a little bit slow though, uh, because R index, right? So that R index can go from zero, zero to R. F index go from zero to F. 
And but what is the the uh, the cost per input, right? Well, there's a limit here which can go up to R, and here there's also an O of R. So this is actually um, O of R cube. Or you, let's write it out. You can put text O of R squared time possibly, uh, and so in the worst case, this could be R to the cube times F, right? Um, that is definitely too slow. I'm going to just run it. I mean, I'm going to submit it just to kind of see how it goes. Apparently, I did it two years ago. Huh? I don't remember this one at all. Uh, I don't, I don't, I, I, if it doesn't pass, I, I wouldn't, uh, oh, actually it did pass. That's kind of uh, a little bit crazy. But, uh, but yeah, so, okay. So it does pass even though it's a little bit slow. It's not quite all to the cube because this thing is uh, uh, limiting to, you know, uh, like there's a, there's a, a, a negative, or well not negative, but there's like a, 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 a like a one over some factor, right? So, uh, but the way that you can think about this is that this is actually a prefix sum, right? It's a prefix sum from R the index to index plus one, which we over we reuse. So you can actually bring the, bring it outside by doing the math, and then just now, cos R index uh, plus uh. uh robot of this thing uh, yeah minus one because yeah that's just how the indexing works Ooh, maybe I am wrong dun, dun, dun. oh no 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 I mean it's, it's fine it's just that I, I don't know I copy and paste this thing without getting the right thing so yeah uh, I don't know why I did it that way but yeah, as you can see now, um, you optimize that with the loop, and it is way faster. No, I mean, yeah. Um, and these are things that you could kind of have to notice from time to time. Uh, and even if you didn't know that you can do this in this prefix some kind of way, if you go back to where it was, um, you know that you're trying to get um, a subarray sum. Uh, and of course, um, so let's say you didn't notice what I did just now. Another way to think about it is that, um, you know, this is a subarray sum, so going from R index to R index plus one. So you can actually maybe just do a cost is equal to, um, as, uh, what is it called? Uh, eh, subarray sum, whatever, right? Subarray sum of R index, R index plus I, right? And of course, then now you can see that, and you can just write it out in a, in another dynamic programming kind of way, right? So from I to J, right? And that is, of course, you could write it in, you know, if I is equal to J, that means you only have one element, so you just, um, actually, I guess you can do it this way. Um, hmm, maybe I'm wrong on this. I mean, you can do it this way, but it doesn't save you that much because I forgot that th this formula is not a subarray sum. Um, so I lied about that a little bit. Uh, I I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm, yeah. I, I, like I said, I'm going to blame everything on being tired. But uh, it's because this is not the sum. It's sum of x, which is a parameter of as a function of f index. So you can't quite do it that way. So my apologies. But there are similar problems where you can do that. Um, just not this one. Um, yeah. All right. But yeah, uh, that's all I have for this one. Um, and oh yeah, as you can see, each input now takes at most all of R times. So then now you reduce this to all of R squared times F. Um, th there are variations on this. For example, you can actually put it the limit as a, as a, the limit of the current factory, for example, as another uh, dimension. Um, so then now you can just do an actual tech no tech instead of tech I robots. Um, so you can do that if you want to practice more things. I am curious what I did last time, actually. Uh, did I do it the for loop way? Uh, I guess I did do it the for loop way. But, uh, but you didn't have to, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, that's all I have for this one. Uh, let me know what you think. There is some sorting, but it gets dominated by these, so that's why I didn't bring it up. And, yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Stay good, stay healthy, take your mental health. I'll see y'all later. Take care. Bye-bye.